Ooh, that one looks nice. Oh, I can't wait to get this in the mail. Nice. Scientists now predict that by 2040, the sea temperatures will have risen so high that up to 50% of the aquatic creatures in the ocean will not be able to survive, creating disastrous effects for our ecosystem and the oceans. This is just one of the numerous effects as, that will be seen as climate change really starts to take hold on the world. Why even bother? Everything on TV is so negative. Media. <laughs> Automatic hard-boiled egg peeler. I didn't even know they made those. Might as well. <laughs> Finally. <sighs> what the hell is this? What? <laughs> Should've known it was too good to be true. Never falling for that again. You know, oh, that must be my Amazon package. Finally. Jesus, I'm waiting forever. Etsy, as described on its own website, is a global marketplace for unique and creative goods. It's home to a universe of special, extraordinary items, from unique handcrafted pieces to vintage treasures. In a time of increasing automation, it's our mission to keep human connection at the heart of commerce. That's why we built a place where creativity lives and thrives because it's powered by people. We help our community of sellers turn their ideas into successful businesses. Our platform connects them with millions of buyers looking for an alternative, something special with a human touch for those in life that deserve imagination. Although Etsy started off as this, a hub for original and handmade products, the marketplace has slowly retreated from its roots, turning into a website that rivals Amazon in the quantity and quality of the products sold on the site. Founded in 2005 by Rob Kalin, Chris McGuire, Haim Shopik, and later Jared Tarbell, Etsy was meant to be a niche website for those who wanted to spend the extra buck to support unique handmade or vintage products from small businesses. But this selling design was all but ditched after Etsy made the controversial and confusing decision in 2013 to allow mass-produced and drop ship products to be sold on their website, a policy change that is often abused by illegitimate sellers. Today, we will be covering the Amazonification of Etsy and how greed, one of the seven deadly sins, with my personal favorite being lust, drop your favorite down below, ruined Etsy for not only its sellers, but also its buyers. I was going to make an entire video about dropshipping itself, but I bit off more than I could chew. And Gabby Bell already made a fantastic video covering that entire topic, so I'm just gonna narrow my focus in on Etsy. Hear that? I'm watching you. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. For a long time, Etsy has been my first choice when looking for gifts for others, or even for myself. Treat yourself. <laughs> Although this video is meant to draw attention to all the ways that Etsy has been on the decline, I still find that Etsy is generally a great place to find and support small businesses. Not to mention, it's one of the only places that helps foster growth of small businesses online, since brands don't have to make their own website and can create a storefront using the widely accessible Etsy website. Most recently, I ordered a Christmas gift for my mother from a small business on Etsy that she loved. I will be getting into my recommendations at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. It's not all doom and gloom. Yes, it is. Etsy is home to a wide, wide array of products. You can find pretty much anything on their website, including horse hooves for cosplayers, human teeth, coffin nails, and a, a pickleless cage, cage fridge, fridge magnet. magnet. Now that, I might have to buy. I turned myself into a pickle, Morty. Um, pickleless cage. Sorry. Yes, Etsy has been known for its rather strange products, but don't let those odd products spoil your image of the website. Let what I'm about to tell you ruin it all instead. I think we can all get the gist of what Etsy is trying to be, or was trying to be, but changes made by its executives over the years have led to sellers and buyers finding it increasingly harder to use the site as intended. Instead of just typing in a search of what you're looking for, with the example used in the beginning of this video being Attack on Titan t-shirts, searching and coming upon dozens of original and unique products, 
users are instead bombarded by the same cheap products being mass produced by drop shippers, claiming that their items are handmade. Okay, I just dropped a lot on you. For us to get a complete picture of what led to this point, we will need to go back in time. On October 1st, 2013, CEO at the time, Chad Dickerson, held an online town hall meeting to announce that Etsy would now permit factory-made goods and drop shipping, provided the seller either designed or hired designer of the items, disclosed to Etsy their factory, disclosed that they used factories and took ownership of the process. In that meeting and afterward, Etsy claimed the meaning of the word handmade should be redefined to encompass factory made. That makes a lot of sense in my opinion. This change was the first step into a more hazy direction for Etsy. Many sellers felt confused, maybe some even elated, and others betrayed. This change meant a whole bunch of things for sellers. Sellers could hire outside help with employees and use factories to produce certain items. The only rule that they needed to follow was that the seller needed to be the main force behind the design of the product. Take a t-shirt, for example. After this new definition of handmade was announced, sellers could create their own designs for their shirt using a digital program, then hand that off to a manufacturer who would print it on mass produced t-shirts instead of the seller producing their own t-shirts and printing them all by themselves. For Dickerson's part, he hoped the new guidelines would clear up some long-standing confusion about what users could and couldn't do. We heard about a lot of sellers who were afraid to hire help or afraid to use any outside assistance because the policies weren't clear, he said. We wanted to open that up to give sellers more freedom in their lives, not less. While yes, this policy change could benefit a lot of sellers who have the ability and sales to source outside help, Smaller sellers felt as though this change would make competition even harder for them since they wouldn't be able to pump out products nearly as quickly as someone who was outsourcing for some of their creative processes. Not to mention that this expanded definition of what handmade meant in part led to the influx of dropshippers claiming that their fully outsourced products that they have zero creative authority over were handmade. That gray line of how much you can touch, that is impossible to enforce, said Sarah Abramson manager of Etsy's Marketplace Integrity term at the community town hall meeting on Tuesday, that was October 1st, 2013. To many, this change was just the big execs wanting to make more money off the website, since more products equals more customers, which equals more profit. The changes that Etsy made at that time do not end there though. A year after the updated definition handmade was pushed out, Etsy started a program called Etsy Wholesale, which would allow retailers to purchase products from Etsy sellers in bulk. Wholesale is the activity of buying and selling goods in large quantities, and therefore at cheaper prices usually to shopkeepers who then sell them to the public. This change, again, made the smaller creators feel abandoned, since they might not have the bandwidth to produce their goods on such a large scale as such. If merchandise from Etsy sellers could be available in thousands of stores, as opposed to in a handful that we could possibly run ourselves, then it's better for our sellers, and it's better for our buyers," said Chad Dickerson, chief executive of Etsy. I, I like, like money. money! Obviously, this was a good change for a lot of bigger businesses on Etsy, but how would this change be balanced, with real handmade products and more mass-produced products on the website? Poorly. <laughs> In fact, due to low demand in June and July of 2018, Etsy drew back the wholesale program, stating that it required too many resources from the company to be worth it, and that the wholesalers would need to market their products differently if they wanted to sell in bulk, since the separate Etsy wholesale website would be completely non-existent from then on. I realized how much of a run-on sentence that was. I want to butt in here to say that a lot of sellers were actually very disappointed when Etsy shut down its wholesale program. Over 50% of my Etsy sales from both my shops come from Etsy Wholesale. This stinks. What is Etsy thinking? How hard is it to keep the section open? I'm not asking them to forge relationships with retailers like Anthropology and West Elm. Etsy Wholesale was a good option to streamline both wholesale and retail. It's a pain to set up the wholesale in my Shopify store. I need extra apps, etc. I really do not want to move to another marketplace for wholesale either. I'm super bummed about this. I wasn't making bank on wholesale, but it certainly helped supplement my income. I guess it's back to doing it the old fashioned way. I'm pretty bummed about this. I had some great repeat customers. The point that I'm trying to make with Etsy deciding to make this program and then shutting it down is that the entire program, in my opinion, allegedly, was motivated by greed. Yes, there were some sellers that definitely benefited from it, but there's a lot of sellers on Etsy who are making everything by themselves, by hand, who do not have the resources to pump out products like people who can sell wholesale can. In the New York Times article that I mentioned, they had a paragraph that was talking about how 90% of retail commerce still takes place in physical stores. And they said Etsy wants a piece of that action. Instead of opening locations, Etsy wanted sellers to take wholesale orders so that through them, Etsy can be in thousands of stores at once without ever cutting a rent check. The bottom line is that Etsy wants to make as much money possible from its sellers that they can. If that means opening up wholesale and having their sellers sell 
in bulk to retailers, then that's what they'll do. If that means letting dropshippers get away out with the stuff they're doing on the website, allegedly, then that's something they'll do. To me, shutting down Etsy wholesale in 2018, especially when, like I just read, there were quite a lot of sellers who benefited from it, is just a sign that it was taking up too much of their resources and they weren't making enough money from it to have it had been worth it for the company. In their own update on Etsy Wholesale, they point out that they had at the time 2 million sellers and only 5,000 of them were actively selling on Etsy Wholesale. And only a small fraction of those sellers sell more than $10,000 a year through the wholesale platform. Quite literally, they are saying here, in my opinion, allegedly, that we weren't making enough money from this, so we're going to shut it down. In 2015, the company then launched Etsy Manufacturing, a marketplace allowing sellers to connect with outside manufacturers to fabricate their products. Manufacturers must be reviewed and approved by Etsy to ensure that they adhere to certain criteria, although Etsy will not conduct in-person visits or inspections. Sellers must apply and be approved to work with any partners listed on Etsy manufacturing and are required to disclose their use of outside manufacturers on their pages. Which they definitely do, of course. Everyone always follows the rules. That's why murder doesn't happen. With the updated definition of handmade, this made it clear that Etsy was trying to get its sellers the hookups so that they could produce and therefore sell more products. I am not denying that the changes that I've just gone over were positive in a few regards, but they also made it easier for scammers to take advantage of buyers, making competition an even bigger hurdle to overcome. Etsy is not embracing mass manufacturing, an Etsy spokesperson told Wired by email. Quite the opposite, in fact. Etsy manufacturing is helping to humanize the production change, prioritizing people and biz process, and emphasizing the relationship between designers, manufacturers, and buyers. Sure, Jan. There is probably much more to cover with Etsy's nearly 20 year existence, but I'm not God and therefore cannot do everything. I am all good, but not all knowing. We're now gonna jump into one of the biggest reasons as to why shopping on Etsy is borderline miserable nowadays. The changes that I just went over were just the prelude. The implementation of outsourcing and wholesaling on Etsy's marketplace were just two factors that contributed to the influx of dropshippers on the website. Now. Technically, dropshipping is not allowed on Etsy like it is on Amazon or Walmart. Sorry. On Amazon, for example, you can become a verified seller, list a product, and make a profit from it despite the fact that it's produced, packaged, and shipped by, let's say, AliExpress. When dropshipping, you bear little to no responsibility in the process of creating the products you're selling. As long as you market your products to consumers, then the rest will be handled by outside sources while you make the profit. That's capitalism, baby. That should have been Austin Powers' catchphrase. Capitalism, baby. <laughs> what am I saying? On Etsy, however, they only allow print-on-demand services such as Printful to be used. This goes back to the example that I provided earlier regarding the t-shirts. You can create your own designs and use mass market mugs, hats, and so on to print your designs onto without you having to do the bulk of the work. I'd say that most people are not against this business practice when implemented correctly. If anyone's mad at you because you're not hand making every mug, they're going to have to get over themselves. <laughs> However, Etsy's rules regarding dropshipping are often broken with little to no action ever taken by the company to combat these scammers. Etsy outlines several prohibited reselling activities, which include repackaging and rebranding commercial items. For example, a gift basket consisting of non handmade items, offering a collection of others, handmade goods, unit designer make. Selling items made or designed by another seller who is not a part of your shop. Selling traditional handicrafts that you didn't design or make. Offering personalization as optional or featured as a separate item without altering the commercial item. Sellers must disclose their outside production and have to be transparent on whether the item is actually handmade. But these rules are pretty much useless when most of the items on the site are not being vetted at all. As of June 20, so this number is much, most likely much higher, Etsy had over 60 million products available on their website. In 2023, it was reported that Etsy had an astounding 6.8 million sellers on its platform. At this point, I can't even blame the company for the amount of dropship items on its website. How can you possibly verify every listing when the platform has become gargantuan in size? In its annual transparency report, Etsy said potentially non-compliant content was flagged 36 million times last year, which was double the figure for 2021, as it policed areas such as counterfeit goods, product safety, and handmade claims more closely. In total, it removed 1.9 million listings for violating its policies in 2022, a 16% increase in on 2021. Good. I guess, you know, I, I don't think you need me to tell you that Etsy's website is riddled with drop shipped items, with the sellers abusing Etsy's lax and unenforced policies on what is handmade. 
It's obvious, even when searching for simple items, that many of the top products that show up are drop shipped. Now, I don't wanna attack any particular shop because there are tons of sellers on Etsy who do this, although Etsy claims it's the exact opposite. In an investigation by the consumer group Witch, they found that by analyzing the first page of items in a selection of categories on Etsy, including furniture, toys, and clothes, and filtering results to show handmade, they found that 23 of the 192 handmade products were available on other platforms or retailers and all but two had higher price on Etsy. What percentage is that? What's 192 divided by 23? 8%. 8, 8, that's not it. 8, 8%. You know, I never claim to be a mathematician. Um. There are many stories of these drop shippers abusing Etsy, and in my opinion, abusing even the websites where drop shipping is allowed on to make up to tens of thousands of dollars a month. These people don't have to do any work or even vet how their products are being made. Most likely, the items that they're drop shipping are not only using production that is disastrous for the environment, but also the people who are all but forced to make these products in their factories, allegedly. It is absolutely sick to me where we live in a system where people can do almost nothing, yet still make a huge profit from their alleged exploits. Tonight on Channel 4, Get rich quick using capitalism. All you have to do is exploit the poor and do nothing in return yourself. You know what? I don't like the sound of that one bit. One TikToker made a video last year going through the top Etsy sellers, as listed on the website, where she alleged that most of them were not actual artists and were instead just skilled dropshippers, which I guess is an art in and of itself, right? As I said, there are many examples of people being scammed by dropshippers or resellers on the Etsy app who've claimed to be selling handmade goods. I bet. Handmade artisans cannot compete with the amount of products that are being pushed out by these bigger storefronts, plain and simple. To add insult to injury, in 2022, CEO Joss Silverman announced that they would increase the 5% transaction fees for sellers to 6.5%. In response to this, over 5,000 shops and their customers pledged to participate in a week-long strike where they said they wouldn't use the site at all. Etsy has become a downright hostile place for authentic small businesses to operate. For both full-time and part-size sellers alike, the changes on Etsy have brought many of us to the brink of financial ruin. After giving Etsy two years of record profits under the most difficult circumstances imaginable, we've tried, frustrated and ready to fight for our seat at the table. This strike also called for Etsy to take action over the reselling and dropshipping problem on their website. Etsy didn't learn its lesson though. Mm -mm. Oh no, no, no. Looks like we're going to have to pull another nut. A year later, hundreds of sellers organized a boycott of their website after Etsy announced that they would be putting a hold on 75% of these sellers' earnings for 45 days for potential refunds, apparently. Reach for comment by PYMNTS, wow, what a mouthful, um, and worse than LGBTQ, I've said that a million times already. Sorry, old joke. And Etsy spokesperson said in an email that the vast majority of sellers receive their funds when they make a sale, with less than 2% of the sellers having a reserve on their account. The spokesperson added that for more than 70% of the sellers whose funds are placed in reserved, the amount on hold totals less than $50. In addition, the reserves are released when the seller adds valid tracking to the order to confirm that it is in transit, and the funds held in reserved are generally made available to sellers within two weeks of the order date. To top this off like a cherry on top of someone's whipped up asshole, Atsy said at the time that they were not accepting complaints about the issue. Makes sense. Dropshippers selling shit items for cheap is not the only issue on Etsy's website. In fact, much like the business model of many fast fashion brands, these dropshippers will go so far as to steal original creators' designs and even their original photography to market their mass-produced knockoffs. One instance of this was a woman named Abby Miespin, the creator of this sequin cowboy hat, which you might have seen on a certain celebrity. I don't know, they're not that popular. I'll link the full article down below that covers this situation, but in short, after Beyonce was seen wearing one of Abby's hats, Abby was overrun with thousands of orders that her small business could not fulfill. This led to dozens of shops ripping her off with her original product and its images showing up on websites like AliExpress and even on websites like Etsy, where that is supposedly expressly forbidden. However, there was little to nothing that Abby could do about the situation since the copyright process for intellectual design is arduous and expensive. Many small creators fall under this victimization with their designs being ripped off only to be cheapened and mass produced by dropshipping websites that are probably using 500 five-year-olds to make the products. Of course, people are gonna buy the cheaper option because, uh, duh, it's cheap. I need this sequin hat that Beyonce wore. Not my problem that it's expensive. In this particular instance, Etsy is no better than websites like Shein, 
who consistently steal designs from small creators and remake them for cheap. Not only is Etsy clearly unperturbed by the humans who make the site what it is, getting their original work stolen, but they barely lift a finger for their sellers when their own work is stolen and then sold on Etsy's own website. Now, I cannot fully fault the company because unfortunately this is gonna happen regardless of any action they take, but the bare minimum would be to listen to your seller's needs to help tamp down on design theft. Dropshippers should not be allowed to resell people's original work for cheap. Unfortunately, this problem is a bit twofold since in trying to pick out dropshippers on Etsy's website, people could make the mistake of assuming that an original design from a shop is being dropshipped from a site like Wish with the price being upticked. I don't claim to know the solution to any of these problems, but that doesn't mean they're not worth talking about, regardless of my authority on the matter. Hey guys, today we're going to be discussing black people's use of the N-word. Something that's in a similar kind of vein to dropshipping and reselling is the proliferation of AI art. 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 Now, AI... Art, art is an entirely different subject matter that requires more discussion, but generally, most artists, including me, don't see AI art as real art. However, this topic is again a, a bit of a gray area, unfortunately. Using the definition of handmade to your advantage, you could easily claim that it's handmade because you typed in the extremely specific prompt to make your extremely shitty t-shirt design. <laughs> sure, Jan. Painters specifically have had to deal with competition with AI artists selling digital prints of watercolor or oil paint AI art. Obviously, the AI stuff is going to be cheaper since no manpower was put into generating a fucking prompt, leading to more people who just want a simple painting for their bedroom to buy it instead of an original work that costs hundreds of dollars. Etsy's seller policy does not mention artificial intelligence. The platform is still determining the place AI-generated works have on the site, his source tells PC Mag. Etsy also has a policy regarding when sellers can claim an item is handmade, but it also does not mention AI and appears virtually unenforceable. I'm an artist on Etsy, and I noticed a dip in my visits and sales of about 30 percent when AI art hit the scene. Thanks for shining a light on this. Dumping AI sludge onto Etsy is the latest scheme pushed by YouTube's Etsy gurus to get rich quick. It runs counter to Etsy's original philosophy of handmade items, but now they are okay with soulless AI sludge and dropship plastic junk from AliExpress flooding their platform. One suggestion that I've seen people bring up is to expand the way that people categorize their products on Etsy, adding labels like AI made or human made. Matt Walsh's newest documentary, What is a Human? Oh wait, um, he can't think that critically. Or adding specific d descriptions of products such as printed on demand to differentiate from handmade clothing items could help. Honestly, it's bizarre to me that other platforms like YouTube make you specify whether AI appears in your video, but a website meant for handcrafted goods doesn't. Sure, Jan. All this being said, technically, if you buy an item that was resold, drop shipped, or AI, pick your poison, you can get a refund for the item being not as described and may even be able to keep the item. If, if you want that, if you want to keep the the item, I guess. I don't know. I applied for a refund last week um, because <laughs> they sent me a hundred boxes of cough syrup instead of Sudafed, which is what they described on the website. And for some reason, I had to bear the responsibility of returning the cough syrup. Like, <laughs> it's, it's not my problem. <laughs> it's such a fucking joke, honestly. In the long run, though, being able to get a refund on your items is not going to solve the major issues that Etsy is experiencing. The main issue being greed. In 2023, Etsy achieved its highest quarterly revenue, $842 million, following its most recent fourth quarter. Hmm. Is Etsy's growth just because people want to support more small businesses? Or is there something more sinister behind it? Yes. If you want to avoid dropshippers, I'm going to let you all know some tips that you can implement. For one, if you're on Google Chrome, you can easily right click an image and click search image with Google. This will prompt a bunch of similar images to pop up, maybe even from AliExpress, which is a big no, no. Reverse image searching on whatever browser or service you're using is probably your best option. However, if the item on Etsy is popular, there is a likelihood that the image you're searching for has actually been stolen by cheaper websites, not the other way around. In that case, it could be helpful to investigate the seller further. Look at their about section and see if they have images of their works in progress or any further proof to confirm or deny your theory. Social media is a huge part of an Etsy seller's business, so checking out their socials can be very helpful as well. Are they showing their process or their work setup? Questions that one should ponder when attempting to be a conscious buyer. If you are still unsure and okay with putting yourself out there, okay, investive journalist over here work, you can kindly message the seller and ask if you could see a new picture of the product that you're considering in maybe like a different lighting. Any good seller would be happy to provide more images of the product that you're looking to buy from them. In general, Etsy is still a great platform Platform. I say after shitting on it for one hour, <laughs> that still has a lot of great sellers and original products. Although it's more difficult to shop on now, it's still my first place to check for unique items that I'm looking to purchase. And at least they're trying to be conscious and ethical, although that
that will never succeed if the only thing they're pushing for is higher profits no matter the cost. Mm. To finish off this video, I'm gonna give you all a few shop recommendations. I'm not gonna go through all my recommendations or else we'll be here all day. I'll also link some articles down below for some shops from all sorts of people with all sorts of products to fit your deepest desires. Except that one though, no, not happening. That's not allowed on the website. <laughs> Mountainese is based in Maine and sells candles, lip balm, soap, and deodorant. I bought a few items from here once for my mom and she loved them all. Whipped Up Wonderful is based in Texas and sells all sorts of handmade bath and shower accessories. I also bought stuff for my mom here and they smelled great and worked well, from what I've heard at least. I was not getting in the bath with my mom. What? The Sunny Teacup sells original teas for book lovers. Indian Creations Corp sells handmade blankets and clothing items from Alpaca Wool by Inca Crafters. Last year, I bought myself and a friend a bracelet from Florence May Handmade, who sells woven pride bracelets. I actually have it right here. I never wear it. I, I'm not a bracelet person. I hate putting on bracelets, they're fucking annoying. Sorry, not a bracelet guy. I'll wear anything else. I'll wear, I'll wear, wear nipple rings too, I'm not gonna wear that though. My Protect Trans Kids crew neck sweater is actually from a shop on Etsy called Meg Amico Art. They sell a bunch of pride merchandise with portions of them being donated to LGBTQ organizations. Finally, Stitch for Pally is a Palestinian owned business with a bunch of stickers, patches, and clothing items with Palestinian designs on them. Like I said, I'll be linking other shops down below that I think you all should check out if you so wish. The final thing I have to say is don't let scammers stop you from supporting the many wonderful businesses that are still on Etsy. Let me know if you purchased from any of the shops that I mentioned. Let me know what your favorite product you ever bought from Etsy was. Hey, just comment down below anything you want to comment down below for that matter. That's it for me and that's it for this video. I wanted to do this video today because I honestly have shopped on Etsy a lot. It's been like this place that I have told other people to shop on too. Like it, my mom has come to me before. She's like, I'm looking for such and such. I'm like, go on Etsy. I'm sure you can find it from a small business on there. If I'm trying to find like a graphic tee or something, I want to find it from a small business on Etsy first and foremost. And it's really frustrating to see the website just kind of turn to shite. Like if I wanted to go on Amazon, I would go on Amazon. There's a reason why I go on Etsy instead of Amazon. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like me, you can subscribe. I post comedy and commentary videos. So if that sounds like your thing, make sure to subscribe and turn on notification bell so you know when I post a video. I also recently started a Patreon. So if you would like to support me over there, it's gonna be linked down below. I'd really appreciate your support on there if you can do that. I'm gonna be posting a ton of exclusive content on there. I already have actually, yes, yes. So if you wanna see more stuff from me, definitely go check out my Patreon. Anyway, I really hope you all enjoyed this video, but more importantly than that, I really, really hope I see you in my next video. I mean, you better be there, right? Be there or be square, that's what they say. I'll literally put you in a box and crush you. Okay? Alright, bye. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fake is if you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a